my little dude had a massive stroke a handful of years ago. Uh, changed everything, dude. So bottom line, he needed the amount of care that I could not give him while I was running my business. We started taking trips down the coast and next thing we know, three years later, man, we haven't stopped. I'm Nelson, and this is our 40-foot bluebird called Sea Change. All right, welcome inside. Um, so again, this is a 40-foot bluebird. We had picked it up, and a big wow. shout out to AAA Bus in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Tony and the guys are dope. I've bought multiple buses through them, and always a straight deal. When we bought it, we had it stripped of all of its seats, uh, just down to the bare metal floor. Like I was saying, this was not our first rig on the road. So when we bought it, we actually took it straight from Phoenix right over to Craggy Wash in uh, yeah. the Lake Havasu area. Mm -hmm. And with a team of friends, we built this thing out in about, I think five weeks, give or take. There's still stuff we're getting done over the year, but the, we had it livable in like five weeks and on the road. We did it all with generators out in the wild like we are now. Um, when I did my design, I wanted it real open. I just built this box in this week. Couch box, because my daughter who's in college comes and stays with me, so I needed a place for her to sleep and the extra storage didn't hurt. But I gave away my antique furniture. I had all antiques in here and it looked pretty. Uh, I almost wish that was still here for the tour, but nice. we just built that box in. We kept it super, uh, minus that build and the solar, it was just a big empty floor space. Um, and we liked it like that. We wanted to keep it all metal roof. I love the vintage bus look. I didn't want to go yeah. with a full like van build look. Nothing wrong with that, but just for this guy. These guys came in the bus itself, like 30, 35 feet of these killer shelves that you could literally hang hammocks from. Um, so super grateful for that. And on a second build I did, I also was able to buy these separately and put them in. So. They're out there if you dig that look. So under here, we got uh, our solar controller and our inverter and our batteries. I happen to roll pretty successfully with uh, 400 amp hours of lithium. I run a full seven cubic feet uh, fridge and I get by just fine, especially when I'm in Arizona or sunny areas of the United States, wherever that is. It gets a little dicey when you're stuck up in the PNW. I spend about six weeks up there building and that was not enough power no matter how many panels you have on top we do have 1200 watts of uh, solar up top and I did start after my second year on the road I did actually have only AGMs uh, a lot of give and take dude price of course is way lower and if you're in Arizona all the time if you're in New Mexico if you're in Texas uh, you might be fine for quite a while with those, but if you do haunt like uh, the PNW, you know, the Pacific Northwest, any areas where you're gonna see a lot of gray skies, <whistles> those things are tough. I killed mine before. And so we went with lithium and I, I'm thrilled about it. The reason why we got on the road was because this little dude um, had a massive stroke and it, he lost his carotid mm. artery on the right hand side and it stroked the entire right hand side of his mm. brain and they couldn't open it, bypass it or anything like that. It's something you don't typically get through, but he did. And after about three years of uh, dealing with the, the ramifications of it, which are con uh, continuous, um, he was medically cleared to be able to get on. He just got medically sound, you know what I mean? And uh, Cat. so, uh, he needed full-time care though. Daddy. So what I decided to Daddy. do, yeah. Sky high. Sky high, yes, we do skydive. Um, so bottom line, man, we just started going, we had the time to just start going down the coast in a van. And go. And you know, we'd go be gone for seven days, then 14 days, then 25 days. And we're realizing we didn't even want to go back. You know, we just felt Your better son. getting going out there more and more. So we bought a Class C RV without knowing anything about this lifestyle. We didn't have social media. We just bought a Class C RV, uh, didn't know anything about it, the RV or the lifestyle, and Daddy. just started rolling. We just decided to aimlessly start, uh, you know, being tramps and drifting around. No! <laughs> 
Oh, there you go. Oh, that's my man. All right, welcome to the kitchen. So this kitchen I put together, I have a uh, oven and stove that just runs off a, a little pot belly uh, propane tank under here uh, that I love, it's awesome. And again, the fridge is like seven cubic feet, yeah. which compared to my van life buddies, like I've got it made, it's perfect for us. This, uh, how we did this side of the kitchen, man, um, it's fully plumbed. We do carry 125 gallons of fresh water, kind of one of the perks of living in a an actual bus compared to a van or a shuttle bus. You can put a lot of weight in these guys. Uh, and 125 gallons gets us by pretty far. I used to do a lot of jugs and all this over the years, depending on the vehicle I was in. But we finally tracked down a Berkey that we could buy in person. And this thing's great because you can just filter tap water from wherever you want into your main tank that you're gonna use for your shower or your dishwashing, whatever and you just throw it through your Berkey. And so we don't have to worry about where we get water. It's not a big pressing issue. And also I'm not continuously hauling jugs around or wasting plastic bottles. So this thing has been really key. Not cheap, but pretty clutch. I'm not big on making cabinets, dude. In fact, uh, I'm not big on it at all for just not good at it. Too. <laughs> but, so this thing here was, came out of another bus friend of mine's bus uh bethany and i was like hey man are you using that like kind of buffet thing and she was not and so i took it put a butcher block on it dropped this copper sink into it we got it plumbed it's beautiful okay so now you're entering the back half of the house and we built this pretty condensed obviously you can see the hallway is pretty narrow but we I really wanted a lot of living space in here and a lot of open space up front. My little dude's cabin here, it's uh, its one of the reasons we went with the 40-footer because bottom line, I wanted him to have a kind of his own enclosure space and he loves it. And then it gives us a ridiculous amount of like pantry area too. Like this is all, all food and uh, like I was saying, all my van life buddies are like, man, you get stupid amount of storage. <laughs> All right, so this is the back bedroom. Underneath this bed, we, we have our 125 gallon tank. I would have loved to have mounted it below. There's plenty of room on this model bus to actually mount it down below. But at the time I was building out, uh, out in the wild, it seemed easier just to go ahead and put it inside. And then I also didn't have to worry so much if I was in uh, below freezing temperatures because none of the plumbing is actually running outside and uh, pipes bust in, uh, below freezing temperatures. I do wish we had all the storage under this bed, but again, I still have enough storage behind this from the, the trunk area to fit like four of the giant bins in the back. So I have plenty of storage. Um, yeah, we just have a, a really dope foam mattress, but yeah, this is the bedroom. I still got those, those rad shelves back here. I did remove sections of them in the bathroom closet area. Um, uh, yeah, that's a that's about it. The dopest road cat in the world, June bug. And um, yeah, and this was all scrap wood, barn wood that I just scored for free. Uh, kind of a crazy idea if you don't like splinters, but it's worked out pretty well for us. I remember the first time we hit a a, a gathering. It was called the RTR, and. That was kind of game changing, especially going to this thing called the party. Yeti. Ended up meeting a tribe of people, which happens now at every event. We meet a tribe of people and then we'll sometimes we'll caravan and travel around for literally four months together. But bottom line, I, I, I meet people that's like, you know, like three months on the road that are going to a gathering and I'm envious because it was good on the road without knowing these things, without hey. Instagram or any of these connections. But man, yeah. the people we meet on the road make all the difference in the world like as far as the national parks go or the great cities we go to man those are good but um it's entirely contingent yeah. on the people we're around man like i can i can frankly have a great time in fresno california and have a miserable time in uh the grand canyon the grand tetons depending on who i'm with you know uh 
People are, the people are the greatest part of our travels, dude. And uh, if you do get to some of these gatherings, you're gonna meet a big community of people who are either in or seeking uh, what you seek. And we're all seeking different things sometimes too. So, you know, you come to a gathering, you're probably gonna find a tribe that fits you well. And uh, it's a neat thing to experience. Okay, you're in probably the most basic bathroom shower build you're ever going to see on the road. Nothing fancy at all. Just tongue and groove planks, uh, faucet, and we just put a curtain across here. Um, in hindsight, especially having done another build now, I would have designed the bathroom a lot differently, but whatever. The, the bottom line is this is what we did and we're totally happy with it. We do have a cedar chip toilet with a urine diverter that goes down to a 25 gallon tank below uh it's got a little fan that blows outside uh if you're thinking to get on the road and you're like what am i doing like i'm gonna actually take a crap in a bucket with cedar chips and that's okay i get it it sounded ridiculous to me too but believe it or not it's totally not uh it's it's it almost seems cleaner than using uh regular toilets to me and it doesn't create any raw sewage which is cool uh, we use biodegradable bags with the cedar chips and yeah, it, what sounds crazy like that will sound normal one day if you really get on the road. It's actually cool. All right, so in the hallway here we have, of course, the escape hatch. And what me and my buddy Shane did is we put in this, uh, just in the wall, we just built in a ladder that goes right up, man. And, and this thing could hold a gorilla up, dude. So we have an 18 foot deck, which honestly we built it in the most efficient and really the cheapest way possible. But I've had 20 plus people, like at Descend on Ben, I was honored that they used this bus as the backstage for the, the whole event and uh, like the backdrop of the stage. And so we literally would have like 20, 25 people on top watching the concert from behind dancing. And we made the deck in one day, uh, for a pretty darn cheap price, so it can be done. You don't have to weld if you don't want to. There's other ways out there. And uh, I'm gonna go up. Okay, so this is one of my favorite additions that of anything on the bus. Uh, me and my buddy Shane built this up in Sedona, Arizona over one day. And we went with, I wanted to keep the bus, this was before I put the storage unit on, I wanted to keep it super low profile, nothing, like as low as you could possibly build it, that's what I wanted. So we literally just ran 18 foot um, two by fours along the sides, because as the bus curves down, we just had them, the two by fours on the sides are straight up and down. And then as it curves up, we have two two by fours below down like this. And then one little slot of metal, I mean, uh, wood in the middle and just literally laid, we, we uh, self-tapping screwed those right into the, uh, ribs of the bus. And then we just laid these boards out right across it, put it all in. And like I was saying, it, it literally the, the deck is only this high off the bus, which I like how that looks. And, uh, and it's crazy strong because we've literally had, like I was saying, like 20, 25 people up here, just hanging out, dancing, all kinds of stuff. So you can build it really cheap, like compared to getting it welded, which welds can be amazing, don't get me wrong. But I really just dug how low profile this was and how cheap we did it. It was cool. Nothing's cheap anymore when it comes to wood, but this was probably the best way I, we could think of doing it. And it worked out rad. I'd like to thank Tiny Home Tours and my man Brian, which is kind of cool because I met him last year, a little over a year ago, just in a parking lot in Flagstaff, Arizona on our way up to the Northeast. And sure enough, here we are a year and a quarter later or something, a year and a half later. Yeah, doing this interview. Um, it's, it is cool because you will meet people like this all over the place. It's really rad. Um, I would say to anybody thinking of doing this, if you're watching these videos because you're thinking of doing this, like I was saying, I couldn't, I can't reiterate enough that like um, the people you're going to meet out here and the experiences you're going to have are going to be far more important than the build you got. I mean, believe me, it sucks being on the side of the road. If you get something that's prone to breaking down, that's a special brand of misery we all have to face at times. So uh, as long as it's got four wheels that will get you down the road, 
jump out and do it, dude, if you really feel like it. If it doesn't go well, whatever whatever you're uh, driving away from will still be there for you to go back to. Uh, and, um, and yeah, man, we've been on the road three years, and honestly, there's not a... Uh, we haven't had a week that we would have changed it. Well, I've lived a few different lives, I, I believe, yeah. but uh, man, we, we love our life out here. It nice. is good. So if you're uh, open-minded, willing, and just suit up and show up, man, it's, it's out here for you, dude. And I encourage you to join us if you want to, um, as a temporary thing, as a tourist, yeah. or as a full-timer, doesn't matter. It's pretty all-inclusive, man. The people out here are typically good. <laughs> Thanks for watching us. If you'd like to look into more of our stuff, um, you can follow us on Interview with the Trampire um, on Instagram. And that's about it, man. I hope I see you guys out there. Look for the beard or the mustache and exactly. reach out and say hi. And you got a friend. Later, guys. Exactly.